that's good. In somebody that invests in small companies, invests what? Invests what? Money. <laughs> so, and do you think it's always a sure thing for a venture capitalist when they take their money and put it out there to make more money? Is it always a sure thing? No. No. So the term venture capitalist also implies a certain amount of Actually, it comes from the, the word venture comes from adventure. Yeah. So being a venture capitalist, Mr. Lauder is a venture capitalist, which, and I, I'm not going to speak for him on this, but I would think that when you take your money and put it out into places where it may or may not reproduce, it's always somewhat of an adventure. But Mr. Lauder has found a way in, in this part of his life to become a venture capitalist in the field of science, and in particular chemistry. So I know that we get there in class and we're working on with all these, you know, the periodic table and chemical formulas and burning things and all that. Um, and you might even think, when, when you think of a chemist, you think of somebody in a white coat, a man that has test tubes and wears goggles and all that. But it's not so much that way in the real world. And I think that the message that Mr. Lauder will leave you with today is that chemistry is a lot bigger than what we normally think of. So could you please welcome Mr. Gary Lauder. Thank you guys. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, be here again. Hopefully you'll find this kind of interesting. So it matters, chemistry matters in a lot of ways, not just because it might be on the test. Um, it could save your life, help you find a spouse, win wars, make a fortune. It controls every aspect of your body makes food taste better and get, gives us more of it, and can cure cancer and preserve your teeth and save the planet. So in one of the ways it could save your life is, for example, in a fire. Um, there are three main kinds of fires, um, and each should be put out in different ways. So uh, you may have seen these on fire extinguishers. There's class A, which is stuff like wood and paper, um, and class B, which is burning um, oils or uh, liquids, gasoline, stuff like that on class C, which is electrical equipment, and then there's class K, which is combustible metals. You'd rarely see that, although I did create a small um, metal fire in Ellie's old school. Um, uh, so uh, that was when I threw sodium into water. I don't know if you've seen what that happened. Uh, so, um, and now here is an example of, of um, learning how that's important to understand. If your object pen catches fire, don't panic. Just follow these instructions. One, turn off the heat. Two, run a cloth under a tap and draw it out. Three, cover the pan and then wait until it's cooled right down. Don't try and move the pan, and whatever you do, don't throw water over the fire. That's over. The effects can be devastating. Yeah, so, uh, um, yeah, so, ba so basically, um, if you try to put out a grease or oil fire with water, um, since oil is lighter than water, um, then the, the water goes underneath. Since the boiling point of oil is much higher than, uh, than the boiling point of, of water, it causes the water to immediately um, boil, which vaporizes all of, the, um, uh, all of the oil into the air, which makes it burn really quickly, which is what caused that big thing. So knowing how to put out a fire properly can be helpful. So chemistry can also matter in your personal lives. Um, so you know, attraction is not just about looks or personality, but also smell. Um, there are things called pheromones, uh, which uh, uh, mammals and other animals respond to, which you, uh, are things you, you can't smell consciously, but you do smell unconsciously. Um, uh, and it, they are detected by what's called the vomeronasal system. In, in snakes, um, you can uh, see it. That's it right there. Um, their, their tongues um, flick out, and they, the, after they bring the tongue back in, they flick the stuff up into there. Uh, and then um, cats have them too, uh, right there. And uh, it's um, actually controversial whether they exist in adult humans, um, but they clearly exist in us when we're fetuses. 
Um, and it, it might be what causes menstrual cycles to align um, in something that's called menstrual synchrony or dormitory effect, which is uh, like girls in dormitories, uh, it is believed that their, their menstrual cycles somehow become aligned. Um, that's also controversial and everyone believes that's true. And uh, artificial pheromones can be exploited in other animals. For example, it's used as a uh, pesticide um, to prevent uh, various pests from finding each other to mate. Um, since the, uh, by creating an artificial um, uh, pheromone and, and spreading a lot of it out there, there's so much that they can't tell the, the fake stuff from the real stuff and that they can't find each other. So um, another interesting, uh, uh, I, you know, I thought I, I was going to do a uh, chem chemistry experiment here, but you'll see in a moment why I, uh, um, I instead chose to do it in PowerPoint. So if you take calcium carbide, which is calcium, uh, uh, two carbons and one calcium, uh, it looks like that and you add a little water, um, uh, then the, you get, uh, for, I don't know what the M is there, so you, you get um, the C2H2, which is acetylene, and calcium hydroxide, and that makes acetylene gas. That's the uh, molecular structure. You can see there's um, uh, carbon there, um, two carbons with the held together with a triple bond and two hydrogens. Um, have you done bonding yet? We're not gonna do bonding, but they actually are learning right now, like the name, they should, no, the calcium carbide they should have right now. Uh, yeah. Calcium hydroxide, probably too. Yeah. Anyway, so that's what that's another way that that molecule looks. And so, uh, with acetylene is flammable, and it's used for miners' lamps. Uh, sorry, used to be used by miners to uh, for lamps in their mines. There was what's called a carbide lamp. They had a little um, uh, uh, some of this that car those carbide rocks, and then uh, something that would drip water on it very slowly, which would create the gas, and um, and then so they'd have a small controlled flame coming out of there. Um, it's also used for welding and cutting um, with uh, an ox what's called an oxyacetylene torch, which mixes uh, acetylene with oxygen. And that burns at six, over 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's really, really hot. Um, and you've probably seen this uh, driving by construction sites. By the way, you shouldn't look directly at that, even from a distance. So, um, so I was going to make some, uh, so, uh, some acetylene here, which I've, I've done at home with uh, my little stash of calcium carbide. Um, but then I discovered about an hour ago that impurities in it um, creates a, a gas called phosphine and an, uh, another gas called arsine. Uh, both of these are chemical weapons and are highly toxic. I always wondered what that smell was, so, um, so I decided, be, you know, better not. It's also e explosive in, um, in the air and it's very explosive when mixed with oxygen. Um, so here we have um, someone else's chemistry class. He's, um, so he's got a balloon full of oxygen and acetylene. He's going to light it. So you can see that that that, that destroyed the uh, what's called the hood. Um, so this is in slow motion. even slower. So, what not to do? <laughs> although, actually, I did do that at home, although without the, uh, it was in, in a balloon out of doors, out in our backyard, and, uh, and it was quite loud. Every dog in the neighborhood barked after that. Um, uh, and it, uh, it was, uh, it was placed, it placed it on some aluminum foil, which uh, afterwards was like blown to smithereens, uh, even though it was underneath the balloon. Um, fun, fun. Anyway, um, so, uh, um, so the chemistry also matters a great deal in both war and peace prizes. So explosives have been used uh, for um, about 150 years uh, for mining and digging tunnels. But gunpowder is a little too weak for, uh, for blowing up the rock. For, I mean, it's not very effective for exploding the rock to, um, to break it apart. So, um, and, and nitroglycerin was invented. Um, it was much better for blowing up rock, but it was very unstable, uh, and so it was unsafe. So, um, this is the chemical structure of nitroglycerin. The, uh, um, there's, those are carbons there, they're not shown, and they don't show any of the hydrogens that are hanging off there either. But anyway, what happens, uh, this is another view of it, shown a different way, but, and there the black are the carbons. So what happens is, um, if you whack this stuff, the hydrogen, which are the red ones, um, get put very close to the oxygens, which are the, um, the white guys. Oh, sorry, no, those are hydrogens. Um, the, 
th those are the hydrogens, tho um, sorry, those are the hydrogens, those are the oxygens. And when you put them close together, they, they like to bond with each other and make water, which, um, which basically causes the whole thing to explode. And, um, and so nitroglycerin was very unstable, and they used to, um, uh, you know, when transporting it from one place to another, it, um, you know, like on a train, it, all this jiggling and boom. And, uh, and so, and in fact, a friend of mine had a summer job working in an explosive factory, and he carried, um, uh, um, they had this, um, this like golf cart type thing that they used for transporting some of the explosives, and they, uh, it was called um, an angel buggy. And he said, why is it called that? And he said, hit a bump and you're an angel. Um, <laughs> So uh, anyway, uh, but so they so uh, so this guy named Alfred Nobel um, invented dynamite, um, which was a mixture of nitroglycerin and sawdust, which wound up making it much more stable, much less likely to go off by accident, um, and, it's a, and that saved a lot of lives. Um, this is uh, what uh, what it looked like. You can see a little you know sawdust in the, uh, in there, and this is the the wire used to detonate it. Um, and uh, um, and it was also used in weapons, so that um, so that you know that lost lives. So um, so Nobel ultimately was noble when um, his brother in 1888 um, died. Um, a French paper mistakenly published Alfred's obituary. They they thought the wrong guy died, and uh, they said the merchant of death is dead, um, and that he became rich by finding ways to kill more people faster than ever before. Um, and and so that um, when Alfred read that he was. Uh, you know, kind of shaken by that. So this guilt led him to establish the Nobel Prizes that you hear about today in physics, chemistry, medicine, literature, and, uh, and the Peace Prize. So um, most of his fortune went to this, and, uh, and, and, that's, uh, um, and the amount that he left was equivalent to about um, a quarter of a billion dollars in today's dollars. So um, anyway, so chemistry, another area in which chemistry is important is it controls your body. So um, here is a, a short movie that um, that shows the uh, the villi of the small intestine. You may know, remember from biology that you, uh, the small intestine absorbs food from your body. So um, in order to uh, to maximize the surface area, your body has evolved to have um, instead of it, the surface of your intestine being flat, it goes up and down like this. So that, uh, that so there's a lot of surface area, and uh, those are the those those little thingies that poke in are called villi. They have capillaries in that. Um, so let's show the capillary within that, the red blood cells within that, the hemoglobin molecules within that, and the hemoglobin releasing oxygen. So here we have it. cells. Inside the red blood cells, these are hemoglobin molecules. Um, and hemoglobin, um, uh, they, uh, th that's what makes blood red. And that's an oxygen that you just saw re being released over there. That, that's the oxygen there. When, it, when a hemoglobin uh, molecule releases an oxygen, um, then uh, it uh, um, it, turn, it turns the hemoglobin from red to blue, which is why your veins, when you see them through your skin, uh, can look blue. Although, um, uh, they, whenever you cut yourself, it's always red. Why? Because it's in contact with the air, and the air has oxygen. So um, hemoglobin enhances your blood's ability to carry oxygen by a factor of 70, uh, 70 times more oxygen-carrying capacity because of it. Um, and uh, um, it'll also bind with carbon monoxide because a carbon monoxide molecule has carbon on one side and oxygen on the other. So the oxygen side of, the, um, uh, of carbon monoxide binds to your hemoglobin, but then the other side is bound to the carbon so it never lets go. Um, and uh, and that eliminates blood's ability to carry oxygen, um, which can cause death or a lifelong disability. So it's, it's, um, breathing carbon monoxide is really dangerous, which is why um, yeah, you need to be careful about that. So um, carbon monoxide comes from incomplete combustion. So um, if it was fully combusted, it would make carbon dioxide, um, but, uh, but when it's not, then, uh, then it creates carbon monoxide. And it, by the way, 
it's, uh, it only takes a small amount of carbon monoxide to be really dangerous because, um, you know, even if you, there's like 0.1% uh, of it in the air, each breath you take, your blood is building up more and more of it. Um, and so that's why it's so dangerous. Um, and so it, um, it can come from um, uh, running a car in a garage with a garage door closed. Um, you know, every year people die due to using kerosene heaters inside a, a sealed room. Um, and, uh, um, and it also happens when, uh, when people's, um, the heaters, the, um, the heaters for their uh, like hot water heating or, um, or their uh, home heating, when those are not t um, uh, properly installed so they don't get enough oxygen. So chemistry also matters to your teeth. Um, so after you eat and drink, the bacteria in your, uh, in your mouth get to eat and drink. Um, and they're usually done about 40 minutes after you're done. <coughs> so um, if you don't stop eating and drinking, neither will they. Um, and uh, so it's like lollipops, uh, sugar soda sip, sipped over a long period of time, or, um, or gum that has sugar in it will have this constant supply of, of sugar to them. And the problem is that the waste products of, uh, of the bacteria is acidic. Um, so, and that, I, that acid rots teeth. So this is what um, uh, the, uh, some of these bacteria look like under electron microscope. And actually, there are 500 different species of bacteria that, um, that can occupy plaque. Um, so this, this is a graph of, um, of the pH um, in the mouth on teeth <coughs> over time. So, um, so what you have here is, um, is uh, the, uh, this side of the graph is unfortunately cut off. It says glucose. This is the amount of glucose um, that someone's drinking in, uh, in a drink. So, um, uh, so in in one scenario, um, it's just you just take one swig of glucose and then that's it. And that is um, and, and that's like these curves here, where big swig of glucose and then um, so the pH goes uh, goes down, meaning it gets more acidic. The yeah. the bacteria have their feast. They excrete their products into your teeth, um, and then uh, and then the pH goes back up to normal, which is close to seven. Seven, pH of seven is neutral. Um, but then, in the scenario where uh, where every uh, I guess every thousand seconds you take another uh, another drink of that soda, um, and what you can see what happens is start to go back, but up. No, nope, bacteria get another feast, get another feast, get another feast, get another feast, get and so so as a result for uh, for all this time. Uh, you, you wind up, uh, the bacteria stay fully fed and excreting acid, um, and that's how, uh, one way, the teeth rot. Um, so the uh, tooth enamel starts to demineralize when the, when the pH goes below 5.5. Um, so the moral of the story is if it's, sugar, if it's sugary, get it over with quickly. Um, but lo and behold, you don't actually need sugar to rot teeth. Sour candies are enough, even if they're sugar-free. So um, you know, the pH scale, is logarithmic. That means for every number lower, it's 10 times more acidic. And so if it's just 0.1 lower, that means it's 26% more acidic. So it's a 0 to 14 scale, or I, I mentioned before, uh, water has a pH of 7, which is neutral. So here are, um, well, sorry, they're, they're, it's cut off, but these are the pHs of, um, of, all, of a bunch of sour candies. Um, this one, uh, Wonka Laffy Taffy is 2.5. Here we have Starburst at 2.4, going down to Sour Skittles at 2.2. And, um, uh, and then these go all the way, um, the Warhead Sour Spray are 1.6, and Battery Acid is 1.0. <coughs> so uh, so if you want to melt your teeth, sa sour candies are the best way. Um, stomach acid can rot them too. So people who, who have bulimia, which is when you think you're fat, so, or you might be if you, uh, if you keep digesting that food, so some, uh, some people vo voluntarily choose to vomit it back um, a as a result of tr uh, avoiding weight gain. Not a healthy thing, not good for your teeth either because stomach acid has a pH of about two. So that's not so good for your teeth either. Um, uh, so, and then there's not flossing. Well, I'll, I'll, we'll skip that. Um, so, <laughs> And if you think that's bad, um, uh, methamphetamine, uh, which is a, a, um, a drug that is abused, um, methamphetamine um, cause, causes your mouth to stop producing spit, and that lack of spit encourages teeth-eating bacteria to grow. Um, and so, uh, anyway, uh, I <coughs> won't, won't dwell on that since it's really gross. So, and then pH matters even on, on a larger scale. So, um, 
so carbon dioxide, as you know, is, uh, um, you know, there's, we're getting more and more of that in our atmosphere as a result of, uh, of burning carbon-based fuels and, um, and also deforestation, not, um, uh, not converting enough of that to uh, oxygen. But anyway, so it's increasing the atmosphere and, that, uh, and it's being dissolved in the ocean. Um, and so it, when it dissolves in water, it makes carbonic acid, which is that's, uh, H2CO3, uh, which is also known as club soda or soda water. Um, and that acid uh, in rain, it eats the limestone to make caves. Um, it's always been there, I mean, uh, so, but now we have a lot more of it. And so as a result, the oceans are also uh, are acidifying and that's killing coral and it's preventing invertebrates um, uh, who no need to form exoskeletons from forming those exoskeletons. And uh, many of those invertebrates are at the bottom of the food chain and they, they ser serve to provide the food to all the other larger fish. And so it's, uh, it's putting uh, most of the life in our oceans at risk. Here's a map of, um, of ocean acidification. Uh, the change in the sea, sur sea surface pH over the past uh, number of years. And um, the, the darker the scale, the, the more acidification. So the, the it's, that's the, where it's worst. Um, but as I mentioned before, a 0.1% change in pH means a 26% increase in acidity. So that's a lot more uh, acid. Why, why is it happening mostly in between the United States and Europe? I don't know uh, for sure. If my guess would be that um, that the since the air um, the uh, air tends to flow from west to east, uh, my guess is that the um, all of the CO two we emit um, it will get uh, washed into the ocean over there. But that's just my guess because that that wouldn't explain this because the, uh, in the uh, southern hemisphere there's very little population down there. So, but it's not all doom and gloom. Um, so chemistry has enabled our population to grow, um, uh, mainly through uh, fertilizers, which increase crop yields, and pesticides, which prevent bugs from eating it, and medicines uh, decrease diseases and, and lengthen life. Um, we've already cleaned up our air a lot and uh, through scrubbers on uh, coal plants, uh, catalytic converters on cars. Those are things that are, um, uh, Catalytic converter is used uh, basically means, a catalytic means it has a catalyst in it. A catalyst is something that causes a chemical reaction to happen faster. The catalysts themselves don't react. In other words, they don't get consumed, but, they, but it causes another reaction to happen faster. And so, um, for example, you, uh, engines give off carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, and uh, stuff like that. And it helps those oxidize to, um, to make things that are uh, less nasty. It turns carbon monoxide, for example, into carbon dioxide. Um, so chemistry may save us, um, it'll uh, meaning humanity. It, uh, it'll enable energy from renewables. So um, one of the companies I invested in um, converts, uh, um, named Geosynfuels, it converts biomass into fuel. Um, biomass is waste from agriculture, or it's the like the unused part of trees from paper plants. Anyway, so it can convert that garbage into uh, into fuel. So, chemistry is also enabling algae to create fuel, and there's a lot of different startups uh, that are uh, that are doing that. Um, and uh, in fact, I believe Alice Shaw's dad uh, has a company that is uh, <coughs> um, that's involved in the creation of uh, uh, of fuels from uh, uh, from these things. Anyway, it also enables better batteries for electric cars. Um, right now, they're very expensive, the batteries, and, um, and the, the better chemistry is improving that, making that cheaper and cheaper every year. And it, uh, it also enables solar cells to be made cheaper every year. So um, understanding chemistry helps us understand and to change our world, uh, understand the changes in our world, and to find solutions too. So that's it. Any questions? that the pH of, um, uh, of uh, most soda, I don't know how much of a variation there is between sodas, um, but the, if you look at the ingredient list on, uh, on sodas, you'll see they, um, in, in addition to, uh, um, you know, carbonation, which is um, carbonic acid, which they don't list, and they say carbonation, carbonated water, but that, uh, that means carbonic acid. They also contain phosphoric acid um, and maybe other acids. I, um, the, um, 
but I, I don't know how much they vary. That's something you could easily measure in, uh, in the chemistry lab. It's also the case that, um, that phosphoric acid that's in, in uh, most colas um, tends to create osteoporosis. Um, so that may, that's where it causes your body to excrete more calcium, which it shouldn't, it would be better to retain that calcium to make your bones stronger. Yes? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. So you want the pH, pH level to be lower? No, no. Um, uh, well, in your mouth, you want your p the pH level to be as close to neutral uh, as possible. So that uh, lower is more acidic, so you actually want it to be less acidic. So the way pH works is a um, uh, is, uh, high number means very basic, very, which is also known as very alkaline. Um, and the opposite of that is acidic. And acidic is a, is a low number. So you, you want it to be close to neutral. Um, and oh, one other thing, uh, um, chewing a sugarless gum after consuming sugary things um, actually does tend to, um, uh, is, is actually really good for minimizing uh, plaque. Uh, uh, what, it, what it does is it, um, it, 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 the gum itself helps uh, uh, remove uh, the biofilm, which is plaque as a biofilm on your teeth and also causes a lot of saliva to flow, which helps wash everything off. So uh, as long as it doesn't get, uh, it, the gum doesn't get stuck in the wrong place, it can be helpful. One more question. Somebody? Um, to your if, uh, to your mouth, I don't know. Um, uh, the I think it might taste weird, um, and 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 if it's very high, it, it's it's poisonous. But um, but I I mean depending on what it is. But I, I, honestly, I don't um, I don't know what would cause it to get there because um, I think most of the foods one eats um, uh, they pr it probably ranges from neutral to acidity. But one way you can tell how acidy a food is is, um, is you put it on red cabbage. Um, red cabbage is a pH indicator, and uh, and so uh, you'll you'll find that, for example, when you take red cabbage and you put uh, vi vinegar on it, it goes from magenta color to um, a much more red color. That which means it's in the presence of acid. If you um, if you can try this at home, you can take uh, put ammonia on it, which is uh, something that's very basic, very alkaline. It'll turn from red to green. Um, don't eat it after doing that. But, uh, but anyway, so you can see it'll it can it can show you what the pH is without you having to go out and get any te pH test strips. So I, um, do, you, do you have a question? Yeah, okay, I think that that oh, but one more. Yes. Uh, you could, but it, um, it, it doesn't. It doesn't give you a very fine granularity of um, of pH. In other words, for example, if your teeth start to rot at a pH of five, um, uh, but it won't. You can't. The color difference isn't isn't significant enough for you to measure that. And also, really, we're talking about the pH right up against your tooth um, in that little biofilm uh, called plaque that's adhering to your teeth. And so that's where it really matters because that's where the bacteria are and that's where the enamel's being eaten away. So, um, so the, the, I, I think that the, it, you, you, can, you can do this test by you know, getting pH test strips and dissolving candies and, and seeing, uh, and this would be, I don't, you know, I don't know if the school does it, but this is, would be a great science fair uh, kind of uh, thing. Anyway, thank you for your attention. Have you seen the YouTubes where they drop it into lakes and stuff? 
Um, yeah, although the, um, uh, the, the, on YouTube, they, they also show, um, like, the, not just sodium, but potassium, and they yeah. go on down the line. Not francium. No. Yeah, that'd be but, too much, huh? Well, francium is too, is like radioactive. Too unstable, and, and yeah. It's radioactive and too hard to get. Yeah. Um, but, I th but I think they go up to rubidium, uh -huh. and they show, um, and the, the, the size of, of explosion, I think, was faked. Oh, you think? I think. Yeah. I mean, and, and, it's too big. And, and one, yeah, I mean, because it's still, it's still hydrogen. Yeah. And, um, and so, um, but I, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I'd be happy to. Okay, yeah. So just, just let, me know, let me know when you want. Yeah, I thought I'd do it. I'm, I'll talk to you about how to do it safely, like have a garbage can out there somewhere in a long thing and drop it in, yeah. something like that. Thanks so much. Sure, my pleasure. All right.